The purpose of this video tutorial is to take you through the steps for the in-class exercise. Step one, download the example letter that we will be tracing. So the way you do that is you go to course content, you go to week three, and you click on the letter T. Once the letter T is open, you don't have to see the whole thing, hold down the control key and click. That gives you the option to save as. You click on save as, you go to documents, your name, assignment to, and then you hit save. All right, that's all we need from that. Okay, step two, we're gonna be opening Adobe Illustrator and we're gonna be creating something new. And what we want, I'm gonna change this to one artboard. This is the artboard section. We're only doing one artboard and it's going to be eight inches by eight inches. Right now the eight inches are already set. Sometimes you'll see it as points. You don't need to worry about points. So click here and find inches and make sure it's set to eight by eight. If it's not, you just highlight the number and then put in the right number. In this case, I have eight inches already. Right now it's untitled and I want to call it exercise one. I'm going to make it bigger. You don't have to worry about this necessarily except hitting that green button uh, makes the whole program fill the screen. A uh, couple things I want you to do is make sure that on the right that the properties panel has been selected. Right now it's selected for layers. If you click over here, the properties panel is on. Step three, you're going to place the example into the document and the way you do that is to go to file and go to place and then you have to find the file that you just downloaded so you go to jbordage assignment 2 go to j letter t and place right now it's following the cursor you click on the object anywhere and it will place the object where it needs to be. Now, the problem is it's a little bit too big. Notice how I moved that. The way I moved it is by clicking and dragging, making sure that I have the selection tool selected. That enables me to move it all around. If I want to move it up into the corner, that's helpful. And I can also use the selection tool to shrink it down a bit. The way I do that is I move it to one of the corners until the arrow changes to a double arrow. I hold down the shift key and then I just drag it into place. I can then use the selection tool and move it kind of more toward the center. And so now I have it placed exactly where I want to. Number, I've kind of skipped ahead of time so I found the selection tool, that was step five. Step six is locate the image trace button. Now, in order to locate the image trace button, I have to select the object. And you can tell that an object is selected by this cross. The way to make it permanently selected is to just click on it, and now you know that uh, cross of blue is selected. Once that cross of blue is selected, you go to the properties panel and you see something called image trace. So you click on image trace and you have a bunch of options. The options option I want you to pick is black and white logo. You click OK. and it is just image traced the object. Basically turning this object, which was kind of a photograph JPEG, into a vector object that can be resized in any way you want. The next step is go back to the properties panel and hit expand. Number nine is to ungroup this object. And you simply go up to the object, pull down menu, go to ungroup. Once it's ungrouped, you go up and use the selection tool and then you click on the white space next to but not inside the letter and then hit delete. Oh. Command Z to bring it back. Something happened there. I'm going to go back and click again. Sometimes I select more than I want. Notice I'm selecting there and I hit delete and at this point I've deleted the white space around the letter but this time I haven't deleted the letter itself. 
Now what I want to do is get this ready to be live painted. And in order to do that, I stay with my selection tool. I select the whole thing. Once I've selected the whole thing, I go to Object, Live Paint, Make. And this makes it a live paint object. The reason why I'll know that is I'll drift over down to this tool, the tool that's underneath the Puppet Warp tool or the thing that looks like a um, push pin. I click on it and that's the Shape Builder tool. But if you go right under the Shape Builder tool, there's the Live Bucket tool. Select the Live Bucket tool. And what should happen is every shape I hover over, there should be a red outline. That tells me I can fill in those spaces without having to do it by hand. So now we're going to have to locate the swatches panel. You can bring it into being by going to Window and go all the way down to Swatches and you'll have the Swatches panel. This Swatches panel will allow you to color different sections of the uh, letter with different colors. Notice right here there are two kinds of, of squares. It's a little hard to see but you'll uh, if you zoom in you'll see a solid square and this is also a square but it's a square with a hole in it. This square with a hole in it has a red line through it and that's the way you want it. If you don't see the red line through it just make sure that you've clicked here uh, which is the null set to get and that's basically the stroke. You don't want a stroke, you just want to fill. So you click on the fill area. Again, that's a solid square. And then you can pick any color you want. What I want you to do for this assignment is I want you to find a warm color for the face of the letter and cool colors for the edges. So I'm going to pick probably a deep orange. And watch what happens when I hover over this. I hover over with the Live Paint Bucket tool and I click and it fills that section which is pretty neat. Now I'm going to go and find a cool color for the edge and I'm going to click all the edges with this one cool color. What you don't want to do, if you'll notice, everything is a shape. So I could actually click on the black outline and fill that too, but you don't want to do that. You want to keep the black outline. So you command Z to go backwards if that happens. Be aware of the black outline. You just want to fill the big shapes on the side. All right. So you've now filled in the letter. This is a three-dimensional letter, so if you have one with 3D edges, then you're going to want to make some directional lines on the letter in order to make it look like there's a shine on one side of the letter, and I'll show you how to do that. Let's zoom in, let's say, to the bottom. So to create those shine letters, I'm going to show you, I'm going to take the line tool and I'm going to draw from one section to the other with the line tool. Right now the line has no dimension and you can tell that by going all the way to the right again to the properties panel and right now there's no stroke. But if I go to this area I can click and give that stroke some dimension. I'm going to make it kind of thick maybe that many points. Now the problem that you're seeing is when I make a stroke that thick it looks kind of awkward, it doesn't integrate. So we're going to actually take that stroke and we're going to turn it into a shape. This is outlined at this point, you can tell because the blue line is through the middle. And what I can do is go to Object, Path, and you're going to outline the stroke. Once I've outlined the stroke, we're going to use a new tool. And the new tool is the direct selection tool. Once I click on that, if I double click on any of these corners, I activate just the one corner and I can move it up. 
and I can move these in place and now it's not quite as awkward. It integrates with the edges. I don't have to necessarily move that, but there you go. All right, so I like the size of that and I might want it. Remember, most of these shading effects look good if the darkness happens towards the edges and you're allowed the middle to shine a little bit. So I might want to replicate this and move it over so that there's two of them. In order to do that, I can simply click on the object and holding down the option key, I can move it over to the other side. And now I have two and I didn't have to do very much. Now for these middle ones, the middle ones probably will be, I'm gonna move that just a little bit more. The middle ones might wanna be a little bit thinner. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go back to my line tool and make another one, try to make it as parallel as possible. And again, I'm gonna to go to the stroke and I'm gonna increase the stroke weight, maybe to two or three. All right, so I'm gonna move that in place. And I don't have to worry about the edges because that one is so small. And again, I'm gonna take the option tool and I'm gonna drag it so it's in place with the other one. Now to see what that effect looks like, I'm gonna back up. and that kind of creates a certain degree of shine. You can play around with that and make it look any way you want, but I wanted you to get understand that convention. So those of you who have three-dimensional works, that is what I would like you, some kind of edge treatment. Doesn't have to be this, doesn't have to be that color, but kind of understanding that process. Now, for those of you who have drop shadow works, obviously you're not gonna have a shadow to work with. And so I want you to create some kind of illusion of shine on the surface of the letter. And so for those folks, what I would like you to do is I would like you to um, take a tool um, under the, the shaper tool, you should find something called the pencil tool. And the pencil tool is a great tool for drawing paths that have curves. And what I'm gonna to try to do is I'm gonna to try to make a curve that comes along the side, outside like that. Now, since it's going to be shine, what I want is instead of right now, it's set for a black stroke, but I don't want a black stroke. So I'm gonna click on this little stroke area right here and choose white. All right, and I'm gonna choose it pretty thick. So I'm gonna make bring it up to maybe nine or 10. The last thing I'm going to do is make my stroke, right now the stroke edges are going to be very sharp, and you, you saw that when I did the black stroke before. So I'm going to make it a round stroke. That's going to look a little bit more the way I would like it to in terms of reflection. So with my pencil tool all set up, I go to the surface and I draw where I think that piece of reflection should be. All right, so I have this reflection, and if I were to just leave it like that, it doesn't quite work because usually reflections kind of feather out. And so what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna click it, and I'm going to go to the effects panel, and the effects panel is gonna help me feather that out. So I'm gonna to go to effects, stylize, and what I'm looking for is feather. Now, feather right now is set to 0 0.07 inches. I'm gonna try that out with a preview. It seems a little bit much, 0.7. I lose a lot of it. So maybe I'm gonna try just 0 0.6. And then I'm gonna hit enter. Okay. That might be okay. I might try to 0.5 as well, but that might be fine for now. The last thing I would do to create this sense of reflection is I click on the, um, the shine and I come over here again to the appearance panel under the properties inspector and I click on opacity and I might bring it down just a little bit just so I can see a little bit of the color through. 
And so you can add shine like this. And at this point, it kind of looks like this is a shiny reflective surface and the light is kind of hitting it from the top. So those of you who have a drop shadow, that is how I would like you to do it. All right, that's the end of the tutorial. So give it a try.